Come, let's sing. Jesus, 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 let's sing. Jesus, and every day children's way. Hey there, friends. It's hump day, which means we're in the middle of the week. Now, all this week, we've been talking about captivity nights. That was almost copyright. We're talking about the time when the children of Israel came into the land of Assyria and especially Babylon after Babylon came to power. And this week so far, we looked at the story of Daniel from Daniel in the lion's den in Daniel 6. But today we're going to talk about the story of the writing on the wall. You know, Nebuchadnezzar was the first king of Babylon when they came and took the land of Israel and they took the Israel people and took them into captivity. But after Nebuchadnezzar had passed away, his son, Belshazzar, actually came to power. And in the beginning of chapter 5 in Daniel, because the book is actually out of order a little bit, in the beginning of chapter 5 we find Belshazzar having this great feast. There's all kinds of food going around, there's all kinds of drinks going around, and they're celebrating and having a good old time, and he's just enjoying himself. When all of a sudden, a hand appears out of nowhere and everybody had no idea what was going on. As a matter of fact, when the king saw this hand appear, he got really scared. And his knees, you can't see my knees, but his knees were shaking a lot. He was really scared. How would you feel if you were walking down the road one day and out of the blue, a finger of a man appears out of nowhere and starts writing a message on the wall? You'd think it's a ghost. Well. What happened afterwards was the king wanted to know what's going on. So the king asked for the astrologers, the soothsayers, any of the Babylonian people that may know what's going on. No one knew what was up. Well, the queen came to Belshazzar and said, There is one man who served in the time of your father, whose name was Daniel. And Daniel can give the interpretation of this dream if you call for him. Well, Belshazzar did call for Daniel, but you'll be surprised what Daniel had to say for him after we sing a song with our friend Paul. So let's go sing with Paul, and I'll see you in a few seconds. Let's go. Sing Christian songs with Paul. Thanks, E.T. Hey, kids, would you like to sing another Christian song? How about When I Grow Up? Whatever I will be when I grow up, I'll be a Christian first when I grow up. If I should be a banker when I grow up, I'll be a Christian banker when I grow up. Whatever I will be when I grow up, I'll be a Christian first when I grow up. If I should be a teacher when I grow up, I'll be a Christian teacher when I grow up. Whatever I will be when I grow up, I'll be a Christian first when I grow up. If I should be a farmer when I grow up, I'll be a Christian farmer when I grow up. Whatever I will be when I grow up, I'll be a Christian first when I grow up. If I should be a preacher when I grow up, I'll be a Christian preacher when I grow up. Great job, kids. We'll see you next time. Hey there, friends. You did a fantastic job singing with Paul. And Paul, as always, brother, you did a wonderful job singing with our friends. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Paul. God is happy with both of you so much. Now, when we left, Belshazzar was going out of his mind. There's a hand that randomly appears. It writes something on the wall. No one can say what that writing stands for, but they call for Daniel. And Daniel had served in the time of Nebuchadnezzar, and even the queen would say, this is a wise man, a man who has knowledge, a man whose God is with him. He has even the ability to see things that only God could see. And when Belshazzar called Daniel, he said, what does this mean? 
And he would say, and it sounds really weird for the words, he would say, the writing on the wall is this, many, many tickle you farson. Now, that sounds kind of funny if you don't know what a you farson is. It's just a different language and a different word. But this was the basic meaning. Daniel would say, King, this is what's going on. God has placed you in a very powerful position. And God placed your father, Nebuchadnezzar, in this position, and he was a man who feared God. He fell from his power, and God showed him who the true king of the universe is, which we'll talk about tomorrow. But you, Belshazzar, have fallen victim to your own lust and desire. You see, Belshazzar wanted nothing more than his own pleasures in this life. And Daniel would say, God's going to take you away from this throne. You know, what's interesting to me is that it took the writing on the wall for a king to finally realize that he'd been living in sin. He didn't follow the way that his father had taught him in obeying and loving and following the God of heaven and the God of earth. Friends, it makes me wonder, what would it take for you to realize that when your parents tell you that you need to pray, we need to go to church, we need to do everything that's pleasing to God, what would it take for you to follow their advice? You know, in Proverbs chapter 1, it talks about there's wisdom found in children obeying their parents. Even in Ephesians chapter 5, we read the same thing, 5 and 6, we read the same thing of children obeying their parents. Friends, I don't know about you, but what would it take for you to obey God today? Will it take writing on the wall? I hope not. The writing is already in the pages of the Bible, but it's up to you to determine how you're going to respond. Now, friends, that's all the time that we have today. Let's go work on our memory work, and I'll see you next time. Let's go. Hey there, friends. I hope you're having a fantastic week. And guess what? It's time for our memory word. Now, until Friday, we'll say the verse once together, and then I want you to say the verse to me. Do you remember where our memory work is from this week? Daniel chapter 6 and verse 16. Now, let's say the verse once together. Are you ready for it? Three, two, one. One, let's go. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Now I want you to say the verse to me. Are you ready? Go ahead. That was great! You did a wonderful job! Now keep working at it and you'll get better and better every single night or day whenever you're doing this. And by Friday, you'll be even smarter than probably your preacher doesn't know this verse. You might know more than him. Now keep working on this and until next time, friends, see you later! Come, let's sing Jesus, of Jesus, Jesus, of Jesus, Jesus, of Jesus, Jesus, let's sing Jesus, and every day children's way.